Welcome back to the Emergency Power Podcast. We made it through another week. So sit on down. And charge up with us. Woo! Yeah! We did it one take. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let us know this again, except for when we do it at the beginning of every episode. (laughs) But usually I do it at the beginning of every episode. This was a team effort. (laughs) That's pretty good. Speaking of the team, I want to jump right in here a little bit because... A lot of stuff happened in the last episode. You guys got Uzi on the throne as the Mega Chief. You guys became part of the Goblin Clan. Like, a bunch of stuff happened. We'll get into that more later. But a thing that you guys got an option for was to have one item of your level for absolutely ding-dang free. So... I want to know what people chose. Five ninety free. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you get, Jeff? Uh, so it, it was a it was a tough call, but I'm trying to make Scriff eventually into a tank, a weird mechanic tank. Uh, <laughs> so I got myself a little defensive option. I took an Aeon Stone, the Amber Hyperboloid. Aeon Stone, which gives me... Amber Hyperboloid! Yes. Uh, <laughs> however you say that. Uh, <laughs> it gives me DR1 and Ooh. energy resistance 1 against all energy types. Oh, wow. Nice. Excellent. Just that one little buffer, man. Yeah. Makes oh, but it only applies to ranged attacks, so there's the kicker. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're getting shot out by laser beams... Good thing to have. Yeah, so Pons got a ability crystal, which gives me a nice. plus one to my deck score. Uh, nice. which just helped me out with the AC and everything survivability a little bit because <laughs> Pons has been in a little bit of trouble recently as he went down last last time. So trying okay. to give him some more survivability. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And decks will add to your armor class a little, so that's mm-hmm. nice. Yep, bring um, those odds to an even. Not a squishy. Yeah, buddy. All right, how about you, Richard? Oh, well, uh, NR5, he's also getting beat up a lot. And it's getting to the point where this caretaker robot is quickly becoming a, uh, a, a combat robot. <laughs> so <laughs> NR5, he has opted for an armor upgrade. Nice. He has selected the uh, enlisted version of Grave Mental Armor. It is an Eoxian invention frequently worn by the expatriates of the Corpse Fleet. Um, so I imagine it might look a little bony, um, but that it's definitely been okay. painted. But he, but he will definitely repaint and relacquer it so that it, it it looks a little little less scary and at least like matches the rest of his coloration. Ah, it's classy it, but deadly. It's ah. cool that we all we all picked things that I think you would find in a goblin <laughs> horde. Yes, definitely <laughs> yeah. shiny, shiny things stuff. and yeah. bones. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's very true. It's perfect. I love mm. it. And we're definitely all trying to survive at this point. Because all yeah. of us said, hex to damage and just don't kill me, please. That was a huge jump in NAC, three points on both K and nice. A. So, yeah. Wow. I'm feeling a lot better about that. And man, next level, we get all those ability boosts. I'm so stoked for that. Dude. Oh, fifth yeah. level is fifth so level, great. Fifth level, you guys are going to come into your own real hard. Yep. Mm. That's, that's the one I need because fifth level is when I qualify for power armor. <sighs> Right, you've been saying that for a while. Yeah, it's so close. I I'm so I'm so it. ready for the dream to come true. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait. Like from Scriff being like trying to front line, but still getting smacked around to suddenly being like, I can uh, actually do this. I have uh. no strength. <laughs> <laughs> Keep but missing that, my melee. But that's the reason why I haven't spent my credits yet. Is because. When I hit five, I need to have a level five armor to turn into power armor. Like that's how it works mm. for mechanic. Uh-huh. I, I don't just automatically get power armor. Uh, I would have to wait for two more levels if I wanted a freebie version. So mm. I've got to buy level five armor. Uh, so I'm saving up. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's totally fair. Oh, I also burned 100 credits on an advanced med kit because we need all the help we can get. Oh, that Very is useful. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very good choice. I've not um, found anything at all. Speaking, <laughs> yours too. speaking <laughs> of stuff, uh, can I ask, can we do something about the poor late 
mega chief who was eaten <laughs> by the troll. Yeah, filth between toes. And yeah, I, and I feel confident that if we just treat that troll really nicely in a day or two, we're going to get that stuff right can, back. <laughs> can we like? Are there any prunes around that can beat this troll? Uh, how no, about I'm pretty how sure. about we get this started and then we can figure <laughs> right. out some options. Yeah. Right. Then we can Let's talk about That's force fair. feeding fiber to the troll. <laughs> Had some other can't options, see but... It, but I just face palmed. <laughs> no, it's it's felt. <laughs> Welcome to the Wasties Goblin Clan, scenic home. For the past four generations of goblins since the landing of the glorious ship SS Explodernator. <laughs> Upon their arrival, the planet was a lush forest. But over time, it has grown to be a lush desert. In fact, <laughs> I think I hear the sounds of a soothing sandstorm now as we return to the Tomes of Emergency Power, Volume 2, Chapter 5. What? Yay! Chapter 5. I thought uh, someone was going to sell me a timeshare right there. Probably would have bought it. <laughs> the computer blinks slowly on the screen of the Relic Monitoring Station. It has given up several of its secrets. A massive ship hangs suspended within the overwhelming gravity outside the planet. A gargantuan ring rests in the depths of the ocean. As Scriff looks over the readout, a sudden static passes across the layout. The sound of howling winds begins to build as it careens dust into the open dome just outside the building. So it looks like we're going to get caved in? It sounds like a sandstorm is a brewing outside, and the yeah. dome above the dish had opened up so That's it could right. actually do its thing. Oh, we should close that. <laughs> Probably <Right>. should. <laughs> okay, I, uh, I, I try the close button. <laughs> you, you, like, press the garage door opener and just go... <laughs> Let me roll engineering for that. Do we need to? You hear the folding chair that was sitting up on the dome go flying off from the sand. <laughs> yeah, and outside it does close, and as it gets closer, that howling wind just starts going crazy until finally poof, connects together and silence falls in the room. Uh, I believe Pons was still back on the spaceship, so I'll, I'll make my way. D did I hear that noise, or, or could I tell something happened? I'm assuming I was still on comms this whole time. Yeah, you guys were just on comms. I imagine that with this kind of discovery, Scriff would have, I don't know, mentioned it. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and if, if our ship is not already, we should move it into the hangar. It is already oh. in the hangar. You guys had several days of partying and hanging out, so it's been relocated. Awesome. But I'll, I'll venture back into that, uh, that room with the satellite. Okay. I'm going to call up everyone on comms uh, that's part of our crew, the secondhand crew, mm -hmm. and say, I think it's time for us to have a meeting and discuss our next plans. Isbin comes over the comm. Uh, this isn't going to be another intervention, is it? No, no, uh, of course not. <laughs> that's what <laughs> they say about all interventions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'll follow pawns over. Acknowledged. Spivey begins his way toward the ship. They have some pretty cool loot in here. I, I think I might need to pick something up. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll meet back with you guys, but I'm curious if there's anything I should buy. Oh, Pons, can you try to sell that uh, hologram uh, that we got in the Gurugatal base for me, please? <laughs> you got to pawn it off on Pons? <laughs> ah, yes, the item that may be of cultural value to the, to a Vesk citizen. Exactly, yes, cultural value. Oh, well, um, yeah, I, I bet I could do something with it then. I, I don't think I've seen it, but sure. Uh, it's, like it's just sitting on the on the uh, workbench. You, you can't miss it. It should be quite recognizable. <laughs> All right, Pons, <laughs> Pons wanders over. And you see this? I'll kind of... Yeah, you see the hologram. It's it's currently turned on, and it's uh, just like this Vesk female in a very uh, risque risque pose <laughs> in a very risque <laughs> pose. Um, but it's tasteful, you know. Um, it's art. It's art, 
and oh. uh, yeah, <laughs> you know it when you see it. Bob's ba- ba- kind of looks at it for a second. Just I, uh, okay. I <laughs> it's a little bit dumbfounded for words. Uh, is there a way to shut it off from my side, or do you have to? <laughs> I, I would imagine it probably has an on yeah, switch. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Boop. <laughs> Just press the button. I don't think I'll be shut. Mm-hmm. Well, wonder if U- no, probably Uzi wouldn't want this. Okay. And I kind of awkwardly look around and be like, who would want this? <laughs> Just very confused. I guess I have to sell it, though. Look, honey, a brain man has come by to sell us some vest pornography. Just what we were thinking we wanted. <laughs> hey, I've got oh, like, it'll the look suit wonderful and over the mantel place. <laughs> yes, we have our own personal dancer. It's okay, it's soft scale. Oh. Uh, is there. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone or any place that would um, perhaps, uh, you know, want this type of. Inventory? Okay. I can't think of the yeah, word I'm looking for. Why mm-hmm. don't you go ahead and give me a diplomacy roll and yes. see if you can sell this to some people. Got so much points in diplomacy. <laughs> it's a 21. Nice. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a galactic catchphrase. You can sell this porn to a goblin merchant. I don't know. Okay, yeah. Who do, what do I see? What do, what's going on here? Uh, I don't know how down the rabbit hole I want to take this scene, so <laughs> okay. I will just say you managed to find someone who deals in unique objects and sell it to them for a high price. You think it's a goblin in a trench coat, but really it's three goblins in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> As this is a trade good, you got the full price of it, a full 750 credits. That is a rare and valuable object, my friend. Huzzah. Yes. Actually, I'll, I'll disperse those to everyone once I get back to the group there. Okay. I'm just glad we're doing our part for galactic commerce. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad that I said Isben Espa follows you. So, like, this entire time, she's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Gotta find a merchant. Hey, can you, can you look over there real fast? <laughs> Bob's just like, just doesn't really care. (laughs) All right, so you sell this thing, and eventually you make your way over to the satellite dish building. Everyone, including Uzi and Victor, is in attendance because they're all part of the secondhand crew. Right. It looks like we're all here. We found something interesting. Um, This here, uh, Scruff points behind him. Uh, is some kind of old sensor technology. Uh, it it sent out a scan across, I think, the whole system. It detected two things of importance. One, there was a large collection of ships, some kind of docking bay or something. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, we can't get there yet unless we have a way to pierce the gravity of this planet. It will be impossible if those ships lie beyond the gravity well. That is my thinking as well. We're going to have to do some work on the ship before it will be ready to get out of the atmosphere. The second thing it found, though, is here on this planet. At the bottom of the ocean, there's some kind of gigantic ring it appears like nothing I've seen before and I think it might be worth checking out are we able to determine if the ring is of humanoid construction uh that's a good question GM Adam just from the scan you got that'd be a very difficult thing to determine it was a it was a structure though right yeah it was some kind of large structure yeah hmm. it could be uh an underwater city maybe or some kind of planetary weapon i we will have to go and find out do i know how far underwater it was 
It's pretty deep down there. <laughs> deep enough that we okay. would need specialized diving equipment for humanoids yes. who are sensitive to pressure. I think. And then, yes, that would it, be uh, correct. Is it yellow? Well, even 5e might, if if it's pressure. I don't know if he's yeah. immune to, to extreme pressure. Probably not. I would he think it breathe, would be. But... It would be akin to sonic or crushing damage, which would be. Yeah, I'm, I I'm think you guys would have to, to gear up to do something like that. So if everyone is uh, in agreement, I, I'm open to other avenues, but I'm curious if this ring has any information that could get us off this planet. Isvin sits back a little bit and looks over at you. I definitely think it's worth checking out. I, I have no idea how there could be ships up in this kind of gravity, and I'll admit that's piqued my interest. But, yeah, I think you're right. There's very little else we can do at the moment, so we might as well see if there's anything worthwhile. But I, for one, am not a great swimmer. No, me neither. You probably swim in circles because of the missing arms. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't say that. <laughs> Too late! <laughs> you know, this whole hey. time I've been going, Richard, don't say anything yet. Yes. Said, Richard, don't say anything. If no, no, no. I, I preface that with I don't say it in character. Well, I, I, I not yeah. preface, but I said yeah. it after the fact. I don't say that. Uh, so unless you someone's spending a really popsicle. Loudly. I don't have a token. Yeah, unless popsicle. someone's spending a popsicle. That would probably be the worst use for a popsicle. <laughs> yeah, just barely get her to like work with you guys. Then it's like, yeah, let's insult yeah. you. Let's make her mad immediately. Yep. That's a bad idea. Um, no, this this kind of reminds Pons of, of Isbin's dream a little bit. Um I can't remember what part exactly, but just talking about kind of the center of this world or, or something trapped within it. Um, it's still just going back to the prisoner concept that he's or that Pons has mm. been trying to research more and more. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm just curious if it's if it's yellow, but that's my only other. Because then, if there's people living there, then they'd be living in a yellow submarine. Oh, but. you beat me to it. <laughs> I was wondering Sorry. what you meant by that earlier, yes. Cooper, because I yes. heard you. <laughs> oh my gosh. A question, question, who has the, the best weapon? I only have a level one weapon. I'm gonna say probably 5e. It might be I... worth buying a, uh, a fusion to let you do full damage underwater. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, not a bad idea. All right, I'll get one for the uh, skip shot pistol because that's just flat okay. lethal damage. I'm sounds good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get one for my liquidator as well. Victor kind of tilts his head a little bit. So, how do you intend to get into the bottom of the ocean? Uh, it depends on how deep it is. I can uh, fashion us some scuba gear, but. Uh, I think uh, that would probably only help us down to about a thousand feet. Do I do not have confidence in scuba equipment that we would purchase from the goblin scavengers. I I'll make it. Advisable. From the readout, Scriff, you can tell that it's several thousand feet down there, like around 9,000 feet. So Ooh. regular okay. scuba gear, probably not going to handle it. So you might have to figure something else out here. Do, do you think that, I mean, there's that other city here with probably higher technology, right? Maybe, yeah. The Salon civilization. I don't imagine our ship can handle ocean depths. Most ships are designed for vacuums, not extreme pressure. You have some knowledge of how it works with submarines, so... I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility to be able to find components here and potentially put something together. Mm. We basically have to pressurize the walls of it, like figure out a way to encase it with something. Or I don't know how the actual technology works here. Some sort of force field. So we're basically talking about turning the ship into a submarine. You could turn the ship into it, which would probably take a lot more effort, or you could make a smaller craft to do the job for you. Uzi, do you have any submersibles ah. lying around? Wait, have what? <laughs> boats that go under the water. Oh, not many boats out in desert, but 
and, and not not when they're sinking either. I mean, like they actually go under the water and keep you alive. No, yeah, Uzi, no. Uzi, get that part. He's okay. saying that out in <laughs> desert, not many boats get here. Well, if you ever wanted to sail the seas, then uh, we we would um, appreciate some help with designing something. Where's I mean, this plan? Have all sorts of scraps and things like that. Lots of it pulled out of places. Not unlike big dome we're sitting under. So might be able to scrounge some things. Here's a question: Are in in the scans from that uh, satellite? Mm -hmm. Did we find any structures along the coast? Maybe there's a wrecked submarine that we can start with. Well, we could always do a flyby in that area and see if we pick up anything. Yeah, We're, yeah, that's so not I'm, a bad I'm, idea. I'm either. wondering if if the scan could give us a a general direction to go. It would not be unreasonable to find something like that along the coast. So you head back over to the monitor and check over the scan that you did. And there are indeed a few objects. They don't ping as anything specific. So you, like Richard suggested, you might have to go do a flyby to see what they are. But there's definitely objects near the coast to be sure. Okay. We can go check one of these out and see if uh, it can give us some starting point to craft a craft. Yeah, could we maybe try like a group engineering check to determine what to salvage and go get stuff? I figure it's going to take us at least a day to get it all together. Probably something along those lines, yeah. Okay, so is that the plan right now then? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to try sure. to figure that out. I think it's going to look janky in one of those like just wood nailed on submarines, but <laughs> maybe it'll work. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Not exactly the life aquatic with Steve Zissou, is it? Little propeller in the back that's just barely spinning like a windmill. Yeah. That's what I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with this decision made, you guys head back to the ship. I'm assuming 5e is doing the piloting on that. I am. So I'm going to have you give me a piloting check. I will, however, assist you with Isman Espa. Piloting check of 19. And you get an assist off of that. Sweet, so 21. As you guys are pulling out of this hangar, Isbin suggests to you, 5e, that maybe we stay low as we fly kind of below the radar mm -hmm. just in case. Because you guys were seen by people when you picked up Victor. They know that someone has a ship in this area. So oh, That's right, and he was still running from that group. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want was. him found. I concur with your analysis, Captain Espa. I will begin terrain following protocols. Let me get a group perception roll. Everyone can contribute to this. I'll, I'll do a ship scan. You guys help with perception. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll take lead on the perception. 26. Awesome. Wow, should have gone with you. Well, I get a 22 <laughs> with his assist. Not bad. The uh, okay, ship scan is a 31. 31, very nice. Okay, it takes a while following along the coast, but... As expected, due to the decayed nature of this place, there is in fact a ship that is turned belly up, has slid along the coast a little bit. It's going horizontal to the waves that are lapping up against it. I spot it from the scan first and on closer inspection. It seems like it's held together fairly well, all things considered. Is this the type of ship that was designed to go underwater? Not necessarily, no. Okay. But you could find some parts on it it's, that might help. It's a start. Okay. Um, can we tow it? We have like a chain. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> I really want to tie it and just drag it you through the sand. You have a giant a spear Harpoon? that fires out of the front Let's of your ship. Let's do damage to this ship. <laughs> All more. right. I'm so down. <laughs> yes. Shoot that thing. Worth who's every usually, penny of these upgrades. Who's usually the gunner? You or me? Uh, yeah, go for it, Jeff. You can take the roll. Okay. This is beer this boat. That's a natural 20. Yes! <laughs> 28. Oh. You're assuming that you're going to need some of the internal parts, so you aim directly for like the front nose area, pierce that, 
and just start pulling it. I'm going to need another piloting check for you guys once again as you lift a boat into the air. <laughs> be a 17. All right. Okay. And that becomes a 19. The way back is a lot more slow going than the way over was. You have to contend with a sandstorm at the same time. So you've got this boat hanging from under the ship and it's just swinging around like a pendulum. Okay. I was going to ask if it was swinging or if we were like dragging it across the sand. <laughs> this is good though. It's going to make another reference, but it, that's okay. It's, it's good that this boat can withstand this because we're going to exert lots of damage to it in order to send it underwater. <laughs> that is oh, true. Yeah. So Indeed. We're, we're learning that it is at least somewhat sturdy. Yeah, and it's probably best not to, say, drag a boat along the ground, which is like a line directly towards you guys. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, not the best idea. We can drag it a little bit just to get the barnacles off. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so after some careful piloting, you guys managed to get it down to the landing pad, pull in, and then just kind of drag it the rest of the way until it's inside and you guys can close the gate on the sandstorm. Very good piloting. That could have gone a lot worse if those were low. All right. I will get to work on crafting this. Uzi, I'm, I, I could use some help. Do you have any uh, goblins that are particularly good with uh, crafting as some, some extra hands? Uzi rubs his chin a little bit. Uzi thinks he can find some people who would be very interested in working on such big thing. So Uzi, go find them and send them your way. Oh, um, we also, we need someone to sort through the trolls, uh, I mean, the remains of the chief. Um. <laughs> it would probably be best if I take that task, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will see to it that I am thoroughly sterilized and sanitized afterwards, of course. That's that's very important. Here, take some soap. <laughs> <laughs> I do not believe that is adequate sanitation. Also going oh, no, to need some goblin bran repellent. Going to need some bran muffins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has been like a few days since this know, took place. Digestive so. system of trolls. Well, someone's about to. I'm just assuming they use it as fertilizer or something, but all right. All right. So five E is going to go have some Jurassic Park moments with troll droppings. Yes. <laughs> Got it. All right. So uh, Scriff is going to start digging into this ship, and some goblins are coming to help. Five E is going to go digging figure into out the troll situation. What's Pons doing? Uh, man, I feel like Pons would just kind of be overseeing the goblins, like trying to procure. All of the procure. uh procure cure. Yeah, I can't say that word. Uh all of the other necessary equipment from this area. Uh does Pons have any engineering? No, pretty average on it. But I can definitely help find some you can stuff. Assist. You can assist. Pons, then you're more than welcome to hang out with Scriff and the goblins and try to sort this stuff out. You probably saw this coming already, Jeff. I'm going to need an engineering check, and I'm also going to need it from people who assist. As you guys are doing that roll, four goblins roll up. They have branch over one of their shoulders. They have like a apron with pockets in it and gear sticking out of everywhere. These guys look like they mean business. Because of that, they're going to give you some bonuses too. Right. Let's get to work. Cue the montage. In this particular case, you're going to get a plus one for every goblin there. And then pawns, did pawns assist? Yeah, 15. Cool. So plus four from the goblins, plus two from pawns. Uh, so plus six, that's going to be a 35. Wow. All right. Oh, oh boy. So at the beginning... These goblins are just excited to see what's happening. They're kind of like watching what you're doing. And then you're kind of like showing them how to do it. So they start picking up the tricks and then they jump in there. Even Pawns is managing to be in on this, carrying ratchets from one person to another. I make Slowly this a teachable moment for the goblins uh, with the hopes that they will form their own navy. <laughs> yes. We're, we're, we're going to take over the other side of the ocean. We don't know what's over there. That's we're gonna, right. We're going to take it over. 
<laughs> They'll never see it coming. Is Silent no. a coastal city? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> oh. um, okay, I'm going to leave you that because it's going to take a little while to do this as you dismantle this thing. And we're going to go over to 5E as he heads to the troll pen. Troll pen. Okay. You walk into this place that's a cavern separated by some distance from the main chamber. And it is a solitary cage. And this thing is the most well-built thing in the entire city for very obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. However, while there are goblins standing kind of near the entrance, the cage door is actually open and the troll is just sitting there. Well, that's... He's crate trained. That's to be expected. I mean, he's supposed to be, you know, a free citizen of... Um, yeah, exactly. ...the tribe lands now. I'm going to start by going up to one of the goblin guards and saying, King Uzi Puswoon has sent me on a rather odd mission. I wish to inspect the troll's droppings. Could you direct me toward them? <laughs> Follow your nose! <laughs> they just point at the cage, and then they go, Glock! And then they just kind of step back. <laughs> Thank you for your assistance. 5 will approach the cage in a very calm, slow, measured manner. Um, and if and when the troll takes notice of him, stop. You get about five feet away from the cage, and mm -hmm. then the troll's eyes track over to you. All right. I raise one appendage in greeting and say, Good day. Do you understand Galactic Common? Understand enough. Huh. Surprising. Okay. What are you going to tell him? I want to see your poop? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it would have been good to have some food or something. So 5 is not good at lying. Oh, no. <laughs> but he's going to try to lie anyway. Okay. We believe that a nasty fecal parasite is circulating among the population here. I would like to inspect your droppings to determine that you have not been affected. If I see signs of a parasite, <laughs> I can administer a cure if you so desire. And I'll... Pull out a med kit that I'm sure has a nice, shiny, happy <laughs> Red Cross symbol on it. Okay, give me a bluff check. If he even understands that. <laughs> I might need to use smaller words, and I'm really worried about that. 21 bluff. All right, let me, let me think of the correct response for this. <laughs> what is the correct response, really, to I'd like to see your boo? <laughs> Do not care. Trolls have good stomachs. But plunge think. And they reach behind themselves and push a pile of stuff next to them. You may looking for something different. These would be items of cultural value to the wasties. You are correct. If it is all right with you, I will take them. They take their hand and set it on top of the pile. Bludge has been trapped in desert by Goblin for long time. No wish to be in clan, wish to leave. Bludge think you have way to leave. If you can provide me with directions to where your home is, perhaps I could arrange transportation. No home on this place. Taken from home. You are from another world? Long time ago. Born on ship. Parents from other world. What? Did, did this That's place have weird. a name? Was never there. Do not know. I see. I'm afraid my spaceship cannot leave this planet at present. However, if there is somewhere on this world that would be more hospitable to you, I think I could arrange transportation. Anywhere that not under burning sun. Take him to Io. Maybe. Do you wish to be around other humanoids? 
They may know of place of slog, glunge mate. I see. Do you know of slog, glunge mate? I am afraid you are the only troll I have met on this planet. You can tell that they're a little sad by this, but it is what it is. If take away glunge from this place, have all of things and poop that want. <laughs> all the poop that you want. Very well. I will see what I can do to arrange transportation for you to the city of Io. I believe that will be where you will want to begin your search for more information about Slog's whereabouts. And allow me to convey my deepest sympathies for your loss. They nod. When we go... That was a question. Ah, okay. Uh, I thought there was more <laughs> coming there. When we go, comma. I would. I want ice cream on the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, I will need to request permission to use the spaceship, but I do not believe that it will be denied. I expect I should be able to transport you to Io within the next one to three standard days. They nod. Look at the things. Look at you. They have nothing left to lose, so they just kind of slide the items over to the front of the cage. Negative. I will collect the items when I've arranged your transportation. Okay, you can see that that actually wins a few points. Um, in the meanwhile, I want to do a medicine check to just make sure that Gludge is overall healthy and doesn't need anything right now. Sure, uh, absolutely. 16 medicine, how's he looking? Well, you notice a couple things. Far as troll anatomy goes, you may not be completely up on it, but you know this one, aside from possibly being a little emaciated, they're otherwise okay. Trolls are very hardy. Um, okay. I also mention I will speak to your attendants outside to see if they can bring you more suitable food. I do not believe you are being properly fed. Thank you. You are welcome. Good day, Glitch. All right, I'm going to turn around and walk off. I'm going to go find Scriff. I need to borrow the second hand. I have agreed to escort the troll Gludge to a place more suitable for his living standards in exchange for the artifacts left over from Filth Between Toes. You, the troll is going to go on the ship? How else am I to transport him to Io? Okay. I Yes, this is... I guess it's okay, as long as he's not going to make a mess of the ship. I will see to it that he is compliant with our conduct code. Scriff thinks for a moment, and then turns back to you. Do you think he would want to go with us? I could see having a troll being very useful. I do not believe that would be a good situation for us or Gludge. All right. Well, uh, I will uh, leave it to you then. But I will ask him. Uh, I'm just seeing him in the back of this tiny submarine, holding his arms around the rest of the people, barely fitting in there. I don't think we're going to be able to take him on the submarine. And, and the rest of us more of a long, long term go with us. Yeah, as, as, as you walk away, Scriff will just say, Why Io? He is looking for his mate. That is the most likely place that he will find the information on her whereabouts. Adam. Is it possible for the ship to scan for specific life signs, like a like scan for a specific race, like like for trolls? If we did a sweep over the planet, yeah. So what you could do is, Scriff, while you're working on this submersible five E, yeah, you could totally take this troll, come back. You guys could potentially upgrade your sensors to the point where it could do a scan like this, and then. If you, say, gave the troll a comm unit or something like that, he could be like, hey, we uh, we just found something out you might be interested in. All right, cool. Um, yeah, then Ivy is going to go back to Gorgeous Cage and on the way in, stop by the goblins outside and say, he requires high-protein food and more of it. Please see to it that he is well-fed. And then I'm going to walk up to the cage hold up my hand in greeting again and say, I did not properly introduce myself during my last visit. Forgive me. I am in our 5 e Um, Bludge. I have leave to take you to the city of Io. I have an additional offer as well. Two, actually. You can hang on to 
a comm link, or we can give you a frequency at which you can contact us. We will attempt to expand our sensor packages and look for slog. If we find any information on her whereabouts, we will pass them on to you. Alternatively, if you would rather not go to civilization, we could find a space for you on our crew, if you are capable of assimilating. While you roll diplomacy, I'm going to roll intelligence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm really worried about the language barrier here. Yeah, what does assimilate mean? In the meanwhile, my diplomacy check was a 12. You say, can find of slog? Maybe. It is not certain. But we could try. If find of slog, lunch, join. Nice. Agreed. In the meanwhile, if you still wish to leave, we can depart in about 12 hours. We leave to find slog? We leave to take you to a place where you can find slog. I cannot go with you. I can only take you there. You can see the gears turning as they haven't quite put together that this is two different options. Mm. So after a couple seconds, you see a light bulb go off. Glunge, stay till find of slog. Ah, okay. Very well. I will hand him a comm link and I'll pick credits for a cheap one. Um, okay. It's got our frequency programmed into it, and just say, hit these two buttons. You can contact us whenever you wish, and we will pass on information to you. <laughs> oh, I press them. Hold don't, up a don't, fist don't, don't ready to them. punch the palm link. <laughs> Do not punch. <laughs> Allow me. Let me demonstrate. I'll take the comm link back and show how the buttons work, and then show him how mine lights up, and I speak into it, and my voice comes out. Okay, the other very one. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, plans changed a little bit. They got through their head that either they can stay here and you'll give some information to them and then you can go do something about it or you drop them off and they go try to look by themselves without your technology so they caught on eventually gotcha scriff pawns yes since your lead scriff i'm gonna need you to roll me a 1d4 and since you're upgrading the sensor packet there, 5e, I'm also going to need a 1d4 from you. And Pons, if you that. just want to roll a 1d4 because it's fun, feel free. Yes. Is right. this for the number of days fun. that it takes? This is correct. Okay. Wow, well. this, is, this is one of those times where I do get a high roll on a d4 and I don't want one. Womp, <laughs> womp. So four days to upgrade this damn sensor pack. Oh. You know, with the help of Pons and those goblins, we get it all done in one day. Oh, snap. I rolled a three. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Pons is like spending three days still trying to work on the submarine, even though it's already done. <laughs> but I think that had to go. Oh, that didn't need to go there. Oh, and that. Mm, no, they already had. Yeah, to go he's that just time. got a floating checklist next to him that he just keeps going over. Yeah. OK, well, I've triple checked it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't trust these goblins. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, since you finished so quick, Scriff, I'll let you go over after the first day and help 5e with the sensor packets. So we'll cut those days in half because Excellent. that's only fair. So yeah, you guys spend a few more days amongst the goblins. And by the end of it, not only do you have a fairly good looking submarine, as there was like a 35 yeah. or something ridiculous on that, but you guys right. have also upgraded your ship even more. So you now have advanced long-range sensors. Yeah. Woohoo! Advanced. Okay. So the uh, fun, fun tidbit: uh, when we roll perception checks, you using the help of the sensors, apparently it grants us a plus four. That's Ooh. actually really helpful. That's really good. good. It would have been good during salvage. We seem like we're getting about to a point where things are going to start happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the things that you have gotten from Gludge the Troll. First thing we're going to start off with is you get a junk disintegrator. It's... It disintegrates the junk? 
it disintegrates the junk and then it explodes and becomes junk. So huh. <laughs> it still has the same fault as other junk weapons that if you roll a one, it's going to explode. Uh, oh. Does that a so guarantee you just take the damage or can you like chuck it? No, you can throw it if you have enough time. However, uh, so, so you roll a 1d4. Uh -huh. If you roll a one, though, it explodes in your face. Oh. Hmm. What? Um, so you guys also have gotten a fair amount of UPBs out of this. Ooh, awesome. You Andy. guys have gotten 1,211. Excellent. That's a number. And the last and final thing is you guys are going to get the armor that Mega Chief Filth Between Toes himself wore. So it's got value from that. <laughs> this is hardened resin light armor. It's got plus two EAC plus three KAC. Oh wow! I think uh, Pawns needs that. That would be super handy. Mm -hmm. All right, you got it, my man. We need you to be less squishy. Yep. Um. So, do we want to just split the PPs? Who needs? You can have them. as well. We need like a. We need a. We need a. Uh, community fund for wait, uh, wait you <laughs> wait i forget account. are upbs the thing you create things the, with yes. or their craft credit? price the craft oh, yeah. price so we just give them to whoever is the best engineering or they're yeah, equivalent I mean, I of money though so yeah, you can are. interchange them that one upb oh. is worth one credit so oh, it's like right. getting money but in instead of like a cred stick it's in the form of rice yeah, let's just go ahead and split them three ways, and if we need to, we can always funnel them back to someone for a sp specific project. Right. You each yeah, can take that four, worth money. You can each add four hundred and four UPBs to your sheet, and I will add nice. four o three. Tell me about this junk disintegrator. This junk disintegrator, as mentioned before, if you roll on that one, you have to deal with the consequences. Uh, it is a two-handed rifle. It is one d six damage plus one it's not plus one to hit but it is plus one to damage this thing is a little overloaded uh, i can't use long arms i don't know if i can i say we just sell that mm. yeah i would agree ah 14 ac now Ooh. some happy goblin not just got a disintegrator gun <laughs> i'm sure that will turn out well oh don't goblins have like a thing where they can deal with the junk Yes, thing. they have an ability where they can take, I think, a full, not a full action, but like an action and like smack it a few times until it starts working again. You no, know, if Uzi has long arm proficiencies, that's really not a bad idea. Yeah, sure. Let's give it to Uzi. It was the yes. old Mega Chiefs. He deserves to have it. Perfect. I love it. And we will take Kick his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Uzi needs no armor. He's too no. powerful. <laughs> when I hand the armor over to Pons, I'll just just say, I sanitized it and read it through a sonic bath to ensure that it is sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, going to like bend down and basically smell it. I don't know where I smell out of, but I'll just touch my brain to it and be like. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I've managed to remove most of the discoloration. Ah, uh, yeah, th <laughs> thank you. Ivy, and I like slide it on a little bit hesitantly. All right, <laughs> that'll be really good though. Out of you know, detergents out of, of the future, yeah, um, doing miracles today. <laughs> you guys can totally do this like while flying and stuff, but this thing is sized currently for a small creature. Pawns, you're technically medium, so uh, I'll just need an engineering check from Jeff. That's easy to do. Yeah, here yeah. you go. Just making sure that's not missed. Mm -hmm. That's a natural 20, 35. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, now oh, that armor fits like you, a glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's now actually, it's under my suit. There we go. Okay, going better. Yeah, and <laughs> I put your blazer over it. Yes. <laughs> I even adjusted the, uh, the helmet, so now you have a... A nice <laughs> protective helmet. It's a protective plexiglass cone. <laughs> when you're like a, a kid wearing a motorcycle helmet and you just feel like a bobblehead. I feel like that. But just like my whole head. <laughs> <laughs> it just shifts a little bit back and forth when you move. 
<laughs> All right. Beautiful. I think we got everything more or less taken care of. Yeah. Let's do this thing, boys. Let's do it. Let's do oh, it. yeah. Let's go underwater. Adventures under the sea. Yay. So how do we how do we get the submarine to the ocean? So the thing is, you guys are going to have to put the submarine probably in your cargo hold for now because you don't have a lot of other places to do it. I can only imagine that you guys are going to have to shove it out the cargo hold when you want to get it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get some of those rolly pads like you used to move furniture. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you guys putting that, put it like in the cargo hold with the rolly things on it. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like smashing around the back. Heave, everyone, heave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with help from your goblin friends and everybody else, you guys managed to take this submersible vehicle over to the ship put it into the cargo hold. If you put it at an angle, it like just barely fits. And then you guys get ready to take off. So as we do, let me get a piloting check from 5E. Oh, yes. Do this, boys. 15. Nice. Solid middle of the road result. <laughs> Make that a 17 for assistance yes. from Isben. Oh, yes. All right. So you guys head towards the ocean. Following Isbin Espa's advice from before, there might still be someone looking out for a ship. You guys stick low to the ground till you hit the coast and head out into the deep ocean. It takes a few hours to get there, but eventually you come to one side of this ring, the closest to land. Isbin looks over at you 5e and says well since i'm not going i'll take over controls from here i believe that would be for the best thank you for your assistance she gives you a nod make it the pilot seat and join the others so i can just imagine you guys going to this craft looking at it <laughs> opening up the big hatch on top <laughs> and like climbing in so because of the size of this thing, it's not quite big enough to fit all of you. It's enough to fit about two seats. And maybe if someone was small enough to say squeeze between someone's legs, they could probably like sit there mm, like a little Isoki with with some compression ability. Just maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'll take the middle seat. <laughs> Well, you have a lot of padding behind you because there's just a giant brain. Oh. <laughs> Excuse the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a t-shirt slogan right there, man. So I imagine you guys climbing into this thing one at a time and then squeezing kind of like you would on the uh, It's a Small World ride at Disneyland where you all just kind of like scooch up in this torpedo-shaped metal death trap. Pull the thing closed. And Isvin Espa is going to send the ship straight up so that you guys, as it starts to lift, you guys hear a grinding, sliding <laughs> sound. <laughs> the cargo door opens, and then there's just a woof, this sickening free fall as you guys uh. bomb your way down towards the water. <laughs> so is there like holding on for dear dear life and like probably screaming or like lurching? Dude, we got a 35 on that engineering check to build this thing. It's got seat belts. It's got all the things. <laughs> just, I'm just looking over at both Pons and Scriff going, interesting. I have never been dumped out of one vehicle ah! while in another vehicle. <laughs> it's a very strange <laughs> sensation. I can feel the G-force exerting on us. As Pond's brain is stretching out in front of him and he's just freaking out, yelling the whole time. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got these mag boots to keep me in place. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, the camera flash goes off just before you guys hit the water. And like there's a picture of all you like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, fan art i want to commission oh right there is a pretty heavy smash as you hit the water and then 
sink down underneath it. You're jostled all over the place, but yeah, you're probably mainly kept in place by 5e's grav boots, and you're all just kind of hanging on for dear life. <laughs> it takes a few minutes for, like, the turning and rotating to finally settle down, and then, I'm assuming 5e, I'm gonna need a piloting check. Right. 5e begins the descent to the bottom of the, uh, the ocean where the ring is. A yes. journey of, t- a journey of, tw- of 9,000 feet and scores a 27 piloting. Right. Oh, baby. Nice. See less, less sea monsters in our future, maybe. Yep. That's good. <laughs> That's the goal. Just tell me exactly how many sea monsters do I see? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's good that we didn't c- try to go down here in scuba gear. Mm. Yeah. I think this might have been a fairly wise decision, all things considered. <laughs> I like the part where instead of getting scuba equipment that is probably dangerous because it was built by goblins, we got a submersible that's probably dangerous because it was half built by goblins. <laughs> no, Bonds, engineered well, Bonds did the, the safety inspections. It's good. Yeah, yeah he went over Dude, it. I, I like, times. checked that thing so many times. <laughs> All right, Adam, what do we see? The further from the surface you go, the less light presents itself. The light on the front of this submersible boom shines out into the darkness, and creatures in the dark slither away from the light as it draws near. As you descend deeper into the ocean and it becomes darker all around you, go ahead and give me a life science check. 19 for 5e. Life science. Can't do it. I am not trained. Uh, You know, I have a good bonus, but that was only a 14. This actually makes sense because you're the one piloting 5e. As you're heading towards this thing, you're noticing a undersea current and what you know of planets in general is all that's not terribly uncommon to have in oceans however they tend to go horizontally along the planet this appears to be going straight downwards towards the bottom it appears that there's a very strong current pushing down this region we might be able to use it to reach the bottom a bit faster I, I, it's definitely a possibility, or it's a giant mouth just breathing in, and we're gonna get sucked right up. Equally possible. <laughs> well, nearly. Pons <laughs> nods and like, yes. Pons okay, like, like, I got it. I got yeah, it. I know it's going down. As long as you can take us down safely, watch out for, uh, what? Watch out for uh, compression. Um, you know, if if we go down quickly, we need to make sure that uh, we match pressure so as not to uh, crush the submersible. Um, You know what? No guts, no glory. I'm going to try to pilot this thing through the current and then see if I can pull out of it before we hit the sea bottom. Go ahead. Give me a piloting check then. That's a 27, baby. Ooh. Okay. So you pull into this current, start heading downwards with it. It's going to be a lot like the descent from the ship. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, um, yeah, Jeff, I'm going to need you to give me an engineering check to be on top of maintaining pressure equalization. Okay. As you start descending. I got a 25. 25. Okay. So you're like going at cranks trying to make sure things are staying pressurized because you guys just keep accelerating through this thing. You're going about as fast as you were when you were dropped out of a plane, but you're oh. underwater. 5e, be careful. We're, I, I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> we should be pulling out of the current about now. Yank back on the yoke. <laughs> you try to pull out of the current, but it is too strong oh. and sweeps you back in. What you can see... As you guys are moving forward, the light on the front of your submersible hits the corner of this ring, and you see a blinding shine off a bronze surface. Next to it, you see, and this is all coming at you incredibly quickly, what looks like several different tunnel entrances, and the suction appears to be pulling you straight towards one of those entrances. 
because you had such a good piloting check, you managed to swerve away from the sides of these tunnels and boom, just get sucked right into one. But you don't take any damage. If your piloting check had been less, you might have had problems. Yay! Yes, all right. So whew, this thing is pulling you along. You essentially have enough control to keep yourself off of the walls, but that is about it. So you're saying that I did this bad thing the best way I possibly could. Absolutely. As you begin to be pulled down into these caves, you hear over a comlink from Isabin Espa. Your trackers are accelerating way too fast. What's going... And then the radio cuts to dead silence. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. This thing is like a, a Faraday cage. Oh, no. You guys yeah, are pulled good. for a long time. Minutes stretch out until finally, through your light, you see the edge of the cave entrance and whoosh, are thrown out. That cave was, it wasn't like a natural structure. That was the part of the ring. It looked natural. So I want you to picture there's this large chunk of the ring that you found inside the ring connected to it almost. There's just several caves that happen in like right up to it. Okay. Huh. So this humanoid made structure is like built into the geology of the ocean floor. Very well could be the Possibly. case. Yeah. Do we still see it in sight? It didn't suck us like out into open ocean, did it? You don't have great visuals from where you're at, uh, okay. but you appear to be in open ocean at the moment. Okay. Where can we see any part of the ring? As you go back and look where the caves were, it's a bit tough going because of the current trying to blow you back away from it. Mm -hmm. You can see that where there should be a ring there's just ground cover. Okay, do we have access back into one of the caves or do all of them have that suction? Right where you're at, all of them appear to be pushing water okay. straight back at you. You can't get communications to work. Every time you try, you just get that same kind of static. You can't reach the second hand. But while you're trying, your little submarine picks up a distress beacon. Ooh. Maybe we should check that out. Yeah, um, can we move toward the source of the beacon? So the signal you're getting is fairly weak, and it's nearly a day's trip away in your little sub. Hmm. So because it's that far of a distance, I will need one more piloting check from you there, 5E. By, by a day's already. trip, you mean like eight hours? Yeah. Not 24. Okay. Piloting 22. Nice. Piloting 22. Okay. One thing you'll also notice that's slightly different from when you guys were dropped into the water. Inside the cabin, it's actually fairly cold here. So that implies that the water outside is also not exactly warm. During your travels with the piloting check that you got, you managed to steer clear of other creatures you might find in the depths. However, there is an occasion of note. Pass near something that you thought was a landmass before it moved. Oh. Oh. Big and... gooba fish. Oh. <laughs> 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 but besides that, yes. you managed to avoid trouble. <laughs> Uh, it's beautiful. Not you all. You all, however, are in deep trouble. <laughs> hey, can, can we put our own distress beacon on? <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. <laughs> the scene you come upon rests at the bottom of the ocean. By the time you get here, you guys are pretty exhausted. This has been a long trip, and you've been confined to this pod for many hours together yeah how much air do we have no i i assumed Issue. that there would be some uh, compressed re uh filtration technology at this point and scriff knowing what he's doing would probably yeah. do something along those lines there there might be but i didn't know if this this ship i didn't know if it was 
technologically gonna, advanced enough, enough to have that. We're going to shove some air tanks in there. Okay. Right. We've got... And 5e doesn't need to breathe. Yeah. Right. But even so, I love that we, we have the rebreather equivalent of Kevin Costner drinking his own urine. I think we're fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to get off of the submarine now. <laughs> Your it's like recycled air on an airplane. That's why it always smells like just bad food feet and misery feet and misery that's what an airline air smells like your torches alight upon the remnants of a small ship an old model that appears to have been resting here for a long time coral and undersea plants have creeped over its surface but it seems still largely intact despite the pressure of the ocean and is easily recognizable as a short-range fishing vessel. The ship took a nosedive, and basically only the back area of the ship where the cargo hold is actually is exposed from the ground underneath. But there's a distress beacon from it? Uh, yes, the distress beacon is coming off this thing. So the forward half of it is just buried deeper in the cave. And we have, like, some kind of arms on this submarine to manipulate things. goodness no no <laughs> but i will say that through your travels you guys have kind of followed along the seabed and it has risen to the point where it is now at a depth where you can get out but it will still be crushingly painful so you'll need to be quick about it oh good if this ship is the source of the distress beacon we will need to investigate. I will go extra vehicular and attempt to open the cargo hatch. Perhaps we can somehow manage to dock this vessel to it for an easy transfer. Sounds good. I'm going to go in closer. So I'll make a piloting check to get a little bit uh, tight there so that I can get out of our hatch and onto the door. It's not great. It's a 14. It's not disastrous either. I'll, I'll Actually, I could use my spawn in this circumstance. My uh, assist ability no. for... Check. Please, thank you. Yeah, to give you a plus oh, two. Oh, yeah, nice. psychically aid. That's kind Very of perfect. Good. I think I do have to roll for it. Um, okay. Yeah, give me that roll then. 21. Natural 20. All right, so push that on up to, uh, what, 16 for psychic assistance? Yep. All right, so you manage to get yourself out into the cold water and push yourself over to the hatch. As you get out into the water, 5e, go ahead, give me a fortitude save for the Ooh. crushing pressures on oh. you. No. Oh. Fortitude 13. Mm. Okay, so you are going to take a little bit of damage as you move into the water here. All right. I rolled fairly well, and basically oh. you're not going to want to stay in this water too long because that's 10 oh. crushing oh. damage. Oh. All right. Good Dang. thing we got that level up. <laughs> the pressures here are extreme as you swim over the very short distance go ahead and give me perception perception 26 All right you can see that whatever was in the cargo hold seems to have creeped out of little sections of the seal of the door so it's kind of crusted over so to get in there, to open that thing up, I'm going to need a strength check from you. Of course you are. <laughs> strength check of 14 to open the door. So you plant your mag boots next to it and start pulling on that thing. And with just a little bit extra leverage from those mag boots, it does manage to pull free. And as you do, water rushes in there, and then stuff just kind of starts floating up with, like, shells of crustaceans and just all sorts of grimy crap just starts floating away. <laughs> you head inside, close the door behind you, and with the perception check that you did, you notice that this ship has just the tiniest amount of power. There's little lights blinking here and there. If you were to give me a engineering check, you might just be able to get this thing to cycle if it still works. Engineering of 17, I'll go over to the nearest power panel 
and see if I can um, restore any system power to the immediate area. And if you see uh, within 60 feet, I can keep skill checking. Okay, yeah, go ahead and give me a roll for assist on that. That was for engineering? Yep. 17. Very nice. With the assist, you pull open a panel. You can feel the psychic hand of pawns helping you, and you guys manage to connect a few wires, and you see just a little bit of power run through it. You short-circuit this thing. And from the outside, in the submersible, you guys can see through the window machines on the side of this ship start to try to whirl and like little uh, fans start to spin to like pull water you see it shooting out one of them's not even working the other one's working over hard and slowly the water pressure inside the cabin begins to dissipate until it clicks to a little dim green light and the cabin pressure has been equalized now is that just that it's dispersing the, the pressure but it's still completely submerged and filled with water or is it actually causing the water to exit the, the vessel it's caused the water as far as you can tell within the airlock to exit okay good you're not sure whether or not there's anything any water on the other side but you're in an empty airlock now yeah and and this chamber at least is pressurized so that we wouldn't take crushing damage inside of here. Correct. Oh, thank goodness. Cool. All right. So I'll relay that back to the team. Let, let them know. Internal pressure monitoring systems appear to be active. This place is safe for the time being. We should be able to cycle the airlock if you want to come aboard. But the conditions outside are savage. All right. Do we have to make any kind of swim check to get over there? Because of 5e's piloting check, you guys are like right next to this thing. So no, I'm not going to make you bother. Okay. That's good. Then, uh, That's I'll, really I'll good. Move into position to go into the pressurized room. Hans, are you going or staying? I, I I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Glad okay. I don't have to do swim checks. Last time that went bad. Come make stupid decisions <laughs> with us. <laughs> <laughs> then what I will need from the two of you instead of swim checks is going to be like five e the fortitude checks. Yeah, I haven't made a save in a while. No, uh, no, you guys have been lucky on that. Yeah, I've, not... I've been too nice, apparently. Mm, nine. How about you there, Scruff? I'm looking to see if this applies. Hold on. Ah, finagling. Got it. Well, uh, Pons, you take no. eight damage. Oh, my brain's never been this small. Ow. <laughs> yeah, just the whole size decreases. Natural 20 for a 24. Nice. You guys take the time to recycle it, get you guys in, cycle it water out the power doesn't seem like it's going to last too much longer so you're going to have to be careful with what you do from here however you do manage to all get into this airlock and get the water out excellent what is the power powering it's kind of hard to tell from here but you know the airlock's got some you know some systems are working because you're able to cycle it but yeah from inside a sealed airlock kind of hard to tell uh, what do we have access to from here? Can we continue further into the cabin space, or do we There's need to... There's the other side of the airlock. Okay. Uh, I don't really have computers or anything that's going to be super helpful in that. Yeah, can we... Does it Does it open if we open it? I will open it. It still has power, you open it. <laughs> okay. So, the way this thing is positioned, you guys are kind of standing on the airlock door. Yeah. So, yeah, it's below you. Makes sense. So you guys together pull the door open. Water does not immediately rush in or anything like that. And as you look down over the airlock, looking down into a cabin space, very small cabin, there's not even a door separating it from the front of the ship. It is surprisingly well kept. And as you look in, there is a bunk that is attached to the wall. There's a skeleton that's propped up. Looks like they were on the bed at one point, and now it is slid up against the wall. Looking down past that, you can see the control room just on the other side. There's one little red light still blinking on it. Go up to the the control panel and uh, see if there's any other information, maybe like a captain's log or okay. anything else useful. I want to examine the remains and see if I can identify the species of who was on this. 
Okay, give me medicine check for that, and then computers check for the console. And that's a 29, and if that's not good enough, then uh, I have uh, my hack directory to tell me of any countermeasures. 23 medicine for the other. Okay. Uh, This species is not going to be very hard to identify. This is a human. So on the computer, Scriff, like I said, the power is dying real low, but you plug Cat in there and you get whatever you can off the main computer and you get four items of potential interest before the computer finally gives up the ghost and shuts down. First, you find a shipping manifest, basically what the cargo is holding. It lists off several types of fish and sea creatures that were caught on this thing, all of which are very foreign sounding and you don't recognize. So kind of of little help and you just kind of scroll by that. It's like, okay, don't eat it. The other three files seem to be video logs. Hmm. Start playing the, play the oldest log. We'll, We'll go in chronological order. I will give you one other bit of information off of these files because you did a really good check, is that all of these files are dated within three weeks of one another, 82 years ago. Oh, that's a lot of power. Hmm. So you pull up the first file. A man appears on the screen. They are a mahogany skinned human with a strong beard and ruffled hair that sticks out from under a woolen cap. His face is the picture of fear and anger. We're trapped here. It's gone. (sighs) Takes a breath. The Calumet Mara is gone. Not that we could get to it anyways. Somehow the, the, the sky won't let us leave. There are no stars to guide by in the night because there's no damn stars. We're stuck here on this planet, this this water planet. And uh, let's not even mention all the fish that are in the cargo hold that I can't eat because they have to be properly cooked or else they're pure poison. He puts a rough hand on his face and drags it until it makes a fist in front of his mouth. And he bites down on one finger His eyes dart around the cabin in panic thought, then looks up as if remembering the camera's on and closes the feed. What is the Calamet Mera? Could that be a a ship that they were waiting to rendezvous with? That does sound like something that somebody would name a ship. This is interesting, though. They realized that they couldn't leave the planet. They had memory that they used to be able to. Yes. Some sort of change underwent. Do not appear to be in an alternate timeline. You said this was dated 82 years ago. Does that figure not coincide with some other figures that we've been given as well? It seems to line up. Something happened here 82 years ago that locked people down preventing them from leaving atmosphere this is the best lead we've had on it yet play the next log oh i'll play the next log the same man however much more disheveled looking and thinner his face is calm with a bit of defiance in his eyes i've lost contact with most of the others that are still alive There was infighting over resources, and more than a couple were lost to the beasts of this planet. The Oleron have vanished entirely, and no matter how many messages we send, or how many search parties go out, we never find them. I know they hate us for being here, for taking fish from an ocean they believe they own wholesale. We starve because we don't know the natives' way of eating here. With our luck, they probably have physiology to eat it raw, and it tastes like fine dining. He shakes his head and looks away. 
The thing that we're all thinking but won't say is they won't help even if they could. We're going to die here and never understand why. And the picture flicks out. Could the Oleron be the natives of this planet, maybe? It certainly seems like it. Yeah. What was the name of the possible ship? The Calamet Mera. Hmm. He said the Oleron have vanished. The natives of this planet, they just left. Did they know that this was coming? And they left preemptively? Or were they taken? Or perhaps are they hiding? Maybe they're in that ring. Let's keep digging through the logs. Play the last log. Same man. His eyes are sunken and his face is sallow. And it easily shows cheekbones underneath his skin. I leave this log not for myself or for those I have challenge the many planet seas with. I leave this in hopes that you can understand what has occurred here. I leave it so my final words can ring in the ears of those who will hear it. I understand why the Oleron never came to our call. We were not fishermen who came to supply the many worlds with food. We were invaders who came to conquer a world of balance and harmony for ourselves. I have no doubt there were talks, but I'm sure we wanted more than they can give. So we took it instead. Thieves upon their world. I was angry until I understood this. But ceasing the struggle to stay alive has given clarity of mind. We set our own fate when we came here. We just didn't know it. Didn't know the sky would clamp down like a vice. He coughs. <laughs> but we claimed our reward for our actions nonetheless. I hope you, you who find this, should anyone find this, that you will beg forgiveness for the Oleron in our my stead may the name of jeremiah not be a curse upon this world may your name not be as well you see him slowly stand up from the chair walk into the bunk and pick up something off the table they lay down on the bed there's a quick movement there and the video continues for another 10 minutes before automatically clicking off due to inactivity. And we'll see you in the next chapter. Oh! <laughs> it's getting dark down oh, here, man. guys. When life drains you down, charge up on the Emergency Power Network. Theme song triangles by Diamond Ace. Find them at bandcamp.com. Music provided by Nicholas Judy of Dark Fantasy Studio at darkfantasystudio.com and Tabletop Audio. Find them at tabletopaudio.com as well as Carl Casey of White Bat Audio. Find them at whitebataudio.com. Font Azonix by Mixo. Find them on Twitter at MixoFX. The Starfinder role-playing game, including its official lore and images, are the intellectual property of Paizo Incorporated. All rights reserved. Narrated by Danny Lee Collins.